Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Power Tips with Heidi, Kylie, Kylie and I. It'd be great if I had more coffee because then I could speak. <laughs> And so uh, we're excited to have you back with us. We are going to focus in on some of the new uh, 2023 Wave 1 features that have been announced. So we've got a a handful of slides talking about some of the new features. I think, Heidi, are you kicking us off? I am kicking us off, and I do think we should come up with some way to mash our names together. That's pretty hilarious. We could could do that. (laughs) All right. I'm going to talk about the pipeline view for opportunities, and I want to show a really brief demo of how cool this is and how easy it is. So there's a screenshot on the right, early access now. So you can test drive this in a demo environment. Remember on anything that's early access, make sure you're just turning it on and configuring it in sandbox. These things will most likely change quite a bit before they Mm -hmm. move to general availability. So don't put this in production just yet. General availability is slated for April, so it should be just around the corner. So there are some really cool things in this view. And I would think I might just dive in and show you this instead of talking to the slides, but I think it's important to talk about requirements. So as I went through and was playing around with it, there's a couple of things I found. First, you have to make sure your environment is opted in to get early access features. Otherwise, this won't just magically appear for you. Second, custom views for opportunities need to be enabled for your environment. Typically, they would be, but if you're not the system admin, they might have turned it off. So if you're not seeing it for some reason, that's something you can check. And finally, you're going to need premium license for this one. As you can see in the screenshot, it's based on Deal Manager, which is a premium thing. So you need Dynamic Sales Premium or Dynamic Sales Enterprise licensing to play with it. So with no further ado, let me show you this. This is a trial environment. Here's our standard opportunity grid. Um, And this feature is only on the opportunity table. Right up here, show as pipeline view. Ooh. Oh, so cool. <laughs> ah. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of this. At the top here are different metrics. These are just KPIs. Now, the documentation says you can define your own KPIs, which is what I think a little misleading um, because you can edit a metric, you can create a new metric, but that only lives on this session. The next time you log into Dynamics, your metric has disappeared. Oh. Hopefully that's something they're working out while it's in early access and it's ready to go. Um, But I thought that was a little bit of a bummer. And there's, I'm just screened in or zoomed in a bit on my screen so you can't see all of them, but there's a lovely view of all the KPIs here at the top. Second thing is your deal manager here. So you can click on any of these and it's gonna filter through and update your grid at the bottom. It's gonna update the panel on the right, which is super cool. You can also change your chart to be a sales funnel. So that's kind of your standard funnel, but on its side versus how it usually is. <laughs> you could also configure and tailor these charts to be whatever you want. So if you wanted to look somehow differently or have something else powering your sales funnel, you can make updates here um, and start to kind of play with it. At the bottom is a list of all of your data, but what's really cool here is it's an editable grid. So you can edit these yeah. in line. And instead of kind of building this dashboard or building this view all on my own as a dashboard, pulling in deal manager, pulling an editable grid and showing data, it's all in one spot. I think it's amazing. And of cool. course, the panel on the right updates with whatever you click on. And you can, oh, give Microsoft your feedback because it's trial. So what do you guys think of this? I feel like it's only a matter of time before this and forecasting are just blended into one. Like there's so much similarity between the two that... Um, I think that they're eventually just going to merge the two. That's my own. I have no reason to believe that other than my own speculation, but uh, mm-hmm. it just feels like it. But I love that they're adding edit- editable grid because I saw that in on the forecasting side as well. They've enabled editing on the drill downs now, so you can change components of records attached to the forecast, which is cool. So same concept as this. So mm-hmm. I, it just feels like they're moving in the same direction on both the tools. And I love it because it's super handy and great visualizing of you know, that the bubbles and everything just, they look cool, but they're also functional as you hover over and click on Mm -hmm. them and stuff. So. Yeah, I really like it. What do you think? Yeah, I like, I like the bubbles. I like that deal tracker, which I think, you know, that bubble chart has been around for a while, but I don't feel like Mm -hmm. many people are using it. So I think it's cool that we're combining it with other things here and hopefully um, that'll get more organizations interested in trying it out. Anything Mm -hmm. we can do to put more information on the screen at one time, right? 
I totally agree. agree. Um, the the notes actually, the Microsoft Learn documentation on this also mentions that you can apply a business rule on top of this view as well, which I thought was interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, but any of always... your entity mm -hmm. level business rules should apply on editable grids. Yeah, just make sure to remember that all these fields that you might have locked on the form itself will now be editable. If you need to fix that, it's JavaScript. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for bearing with me on my demo. Kylie, you're up. Well, I think you're gonna help me demo this one as well, um, but I've included a few of the just cool features that I saw that were coming up. So um, one of them is best, best next step. Yeah, so it should help you composing emails, help you automate follow-up tasks. And I think there's another separate automating follow-up task item in the release plan as well and doing product recommendations. So just lots of really easy ways to um, help the sellers or users know what they should be doing next. Um, and I know we've had relationship insights in the past. Can't remember if it's my next slide, but I know one of the other items in our release uh, list is relationship insights turned on out of the box or something like that, right? So we've had relationship insights for a while, but people are not sure how to configure it or they're a little bit worried. So now we're getting some of that stuff built in and easy to turn on. So Heidi, I think you put this in your trial environment as well. I did. Yeah, so I, I turned this on on leads and this is controlled here in the sales insight settings. So you'll go to the sales accelerator workplace and then you can turn it on for any custom tables that you might have as well. So we'll open a lead and then right here in the center in our timeline section, we've got our up next. And I like that it gives you a lot of information, right? Cause it's early access. Again, don't put this one in your production environment yet, <laughs> even though it's cool. So this is suggesting that we should send an intro email and it would be due here. If I wanna do that, you just click email and then it pulls everything in. I don't have any templates in here. It just pulled this in, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So I and, like it. Send. And when you turn this on, you didn't have to configure the, like they should send an intro email first. None of that, all of this uh, intelligence was just built right in. Yeah, the magic is there, yep. So we did the email. Now it says, wait four days, 23 hours, 59 minutes. Then we're going to call the customer. Then we're going to wait. Then we're going to send the thank you. Then we're going to schedule a meeting. Really cool stuff. I think it's important to underscore. That's not a thing you built. It just no. is putting that into place saying, based on what yep. we see is successful, this is what you should do. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 You mm. just turn it on. That's really neat. AI is pretty cool. Agreed. Cool. So I had some other AI um, fueled features as well. So one of these was tips and suggestions while on a call. So what the idea here is you're seeing part of our app up next, but we're also seeing other recommendations on the right hand side. So I'm taking a call <clears throat> through Teams that's already integrated with Dynamics. And that means that Dynamics is getting that call transcript, right? We already saw in past release, you can get um, automatic call summaries and things like that. Uh, but we're also getting this agenda and notes and kind of next ideas. So you'll see um, that it's telling us what else we should be talking about. So I think that'll be really cool. Again, I'm interested in just like this feature, how easy is it to turn on? What do I have to configure? you know, do I have to tell it what some of this stuff should be or how much does it already know, right? Malcolm, what do you think about this thing? I I love this stuff. I it's We've long told people like the concept of a CRM is you're managing the relationship with your customer, right? And so for a long time, I've, I've encouraged organizations or ones that I worked at, we're going to put like a box that you just put side notes about a customer they just mm -hmm. moved they have bought a new dog their child has a birthday coming up they're whatever and so this is we're getting to a place now where it's going to start to just table stuff based on your past interaction and that to me is mind-blowing because it takes the need to keep track of that yourself and have a like oh after my call i need seven minutes of debrief time to put those notes in place mm -hmm. it's capturing all that and it's just gonna it's gonna table all that stuff for you as you go through the call and i don't know if you've ever been on a call with 
a customer rep or even just a friend, when somebody remembers a detail about your life in that call, that's a feel good moment, right? And so yeah. in the context of like the business world, if I'm a customer and I'm getting a call from some other salesman, another salesperson, and I get that phone call, but that person can remember elements of past conversations, that that to me is something that's going to make a lot of customers perk up and be like, well, these, this this place knows what they're doing, right? They're paying mm -hmm. attention and, and I feel valued. And that I think is the core of all this stuff, which is amazing. For sure, for sure. Cool. And then Good stuff. our last AI feature was intelligent suggestions. So very closely connected to our up next and our tips while on a call. Uh, but we're also being able to get intelligent suggestions. So based on the account, what are some things that I need to be doing? You know, how can I follow precise workflows to improve my effectiveness? And how can I collaborate well? with my team, right? So all of these features that we talked about are kind of interconnected and all based off of AI in our environment and based on, you know, learning that Microsoft has been doing for a long, long time. So I think it's really, it's interesting and it's going to be interesting to see how this continues to improve. And I think it's just kind of shows the direction the product is going and really lines up with all of the co-pilot announcements, right, from last week as well so yeah, yeah. And i think it's also interesting the end important to know that all of these features everyone we've talked about so far requires a premium license mm -hmm. so just keep that in mind if you're on sales professional these things are cool and it might be worth paying an extra 30 dollars per user per yeah you really have to do the roi right yeah. um so I've got the next couple and I did the same as Kylie. I kind of took some things that I'm really excited to see in the, the and it was the list was extensive. We were just talking about before we kicked off the call, every single thing I read in this release, I was like, oh, that's really cool. Wow. I can't believe they're doing that. Wow. That's really cool. Every single one. So there's a lot of great stuff coming. The two that jumped out at me and I, there could have been 20 because there's a lot of them, but the two that I thought really cool, kind of piggybacking on some of the stuff that you're talking about, Kylie, is that how they're they're leveraging the conversational intelligence for the manager right so a lot of the stuff we talked about is the direct seller who's um who's going to benefit from these features and using this you know get, getting the call tips and what to talk about but hopefully that's all improving the sentiment which a manager can now see across the team and start to filter and see and now the screenshots are pretty small unfortunately but if you go to the docs or the learn sorry uh content um you can zoom in on them and get a better sense but what it's starting to do is call things out like you can see in the top left um of the top screenshot 157 words per minute that's like the optimal range that somebody should should hit if they want to keep a customer engaged in the conversation and so on that blows my mind right that it that it's picking up on that and it's starting to correlate hey we're noticing that when you talk about these things you're winning an opportunity when you talk about these things you're losing an opportunity so that that kind of insight is stuff that you could probably do on your own if you were really really meticulous and paid attention and kept track of every single thing that you talked about and your sentiment your ups your downs your you know how you um what's that word that i'm looking for when you speak and you reflect not reflect anyways your there's a word cadence? Of, yeah your cadence and there's another um word that i clearly can't think of because again not enough coffee but uh, <laughs> inflection is the word i was looking for inflect um so when you you know your inflection you're excited or you're not mm. you're, you're monotone that it's paying attention to those things and and determining which is, is more important and uh, to win a deal so this stuff just to me you can see the bottom screenshot there's here's coaching opportunities for a manager hey this salesperson here's their cadence here's their percent of times that they're closing deals based on these things this insight for a manager is amazing to go to a seller and say hey i noticed that we're seeing a decline and we noticed that there's a there's a tie between what you're talking about so let's try these other topics and and bring this into play instead so pretty cool stuff there um that the whole conversation of intelligence stuff is amazing to me but i don't know if you guys think this is valuable or not but i think it could make curious. some really interesting like one-on-one -on -one meetings with your staff but yeah. with all of this data at your fingertips i think it's really important for if you are a sales leader and a manager to you know approach this in a nice way for your employees too right like don't just read the metrics if they're really bad find a nice right. way to deliver the news 
Yeah. <laughs> and use it for coaching, right? That's the whole intent. Yeah. It even says right on the release stuff. There's a whole coaching. like uh, it's not a disclaimer, but it's a whole st- I guess it is a disclaimer statement that says, you know, we're not making this available to make a, a hiring or firing decision based upon it. It's it's information for you to consider in the overall performance of of someone and help uh, augment all of the other things that you should be paying attention to about somebody's fit with your organization. So and that's a good call out because it you're 100 percent right. Heidi. You can't just look at this and be like, oh, yeah, you're awful. Bye. Right? There's <laughs> there's more to it than that. So. I, I like that it's emerging trends, too, that's kind of hidden here on the bottom of the top screenshot. That's kind of cool. Agreed. And I think what we also have to remember about this is this is going to be based on our call our call recordings, too, right? So, one, we're going to have to be doing that, but that's also going to determine how robust these analytics are, like how mm-hmm. many calls you've been on and how many of them have been recorded, how long are they, things like that. Mm Because if you have a really long call that was a disaster and then regularly have very successful short calls, you know, that's going to potentially skew your your metrics. Right. So be aware of what data is going in to power this. Yeah. Good call. All right. And then the second one, um, this one's fantastic to me as well, because, uh, you know, as we talk about conversational intelligence, people are sharing information, personal information, and that's being auto recorded. So one of the natural concerns that comes out of that is, well, I maybe don't write down those things, but the the transcription is capturing that. And so the AI is now going to automatically identify and redact personal information, credit card numbers that are shared during a transaction all of the any really anything now i what i don't know and i didn't get from the the release details is what's guiding that like how are they determining what is personal and what's not and like all things ai it's not going to be perfect right it's going to it's possible that some things are going to be redacted that maybe don't need to be and the vice versa right that there's probably things that should be that aren't and so it'll be i'm really curious i think this is a fantastic feature but i'm really curious to see how it evolves because the there's a fine line between what should and shouldn't be redacted in some cases. And and I'm curious how it's going to determine what it should and shouldn't protect. And also curious about, can you unredact something, right? If you do uncover that, oh, no, that's information that shouldn't be, and we want that data in there, can we unredact it? I, I don't even know if that's the right word. Re-redact it? Unredact it? De- de-retract it? I don't know. But whatever the case is, can you do that? And if you can... That opens up a whole other can of worms because who can do that? I assume administrators, but so just lots of questions that I think come out of that. But the principle and the theory of this functionality, I think, is amazing, right? Here, my credit card number is this, and it's going to take that out of the mix. From a PCI compliance perspective, that's exactly what we want. We don't write that number down. We want to you know, enter it directly into the, our secure system and not have it tracked anywhere. So for it to automatically get rid of that, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, this will be interesting because it's also going to be different by industry, right? Like credit card numbers is a great example because in no case do we want our credit card numbers in Dynamics. Great. But what about like health information, right? Like if I get on a call early and we're talking about, you know, someone was sick and whatever, that's personal health information that probably should be redacted. But if I'm a medical office and we're having that conversation, like then it shouldn't be. So that'll be interesting to see what power we have of over how that works. Yeah, agreed. Cool feature. I like I like where they're going with it. I just have lots of questions about how it's going to be realized. Sure. And as you can see, it's out now, so you can actually leverage this and I, you know, I would love to to do some training and trials and testing on it to to see just what what does it capture and what doesn't it capture and how does it identify a credit card number um and and could it miss it somehow, right? Is there a way that we could if somebody delivered a credit card number in a slightly different way than what it's expecting, does it does it actually redact it or does it not recognize that it's a credit card number? So things like that. Interesting stuff. But those are the two that really jumped out at me. I just again, I think, and we all agreed at the top of the call that so many of the features in this release are in this wave are just eye-opening and and like, wow, that's really cool. So it's exciting as it always is. It's exciting to be part of all this stuff. <laughs>